Hey there. Just getting started on some hand stitching of a blouse that I've been working on. So I am just stitching. <laughs> been a bit of a day today. Started out just fine, but then you know you get one little text message or something and it just throws off the rest of your day. So I'm hoping a little bit of sewing will help me calm down because I'm feeling a little bit anxious about pretty much everything which you know who is it these days I'm hoping to get this finished before tomorrow so have a bit to go on this. I need to finish uh, sewing this collar into place and then I have some work on the machine to do. I have to sew in some pockets and add some buttons and buttonholes still. So I have quite a bit to do on this still because you know you get to procrastinating and plus I had a lot of work in my real life job uh, to do this week, so that held me up a little bit on finishing this. So, this is a Halloween themed top. It's got these cute little little candy corns on them, and I'm hoping it will help me look like a snack. <laughs> That's a joke. It will not. It's a button-down shirt. Those usually don't, uh, don't do that. But, uh, you know, a girl could try. <laughs> you know? Girl can try. So this is a pattern from the late 50s. I've been really digging the 50s style lately. By lately, I mean for as long as I can recall the 50s, 40s and 50s style is really Really, what I'm going for, because they they just went a little little extra without going too far. When you go too far back, clothes tend to just be a little little too much to do. Although I am eventually wanting to make myself a whole Victorian outfit, but that really entails a lot. <laughs> a lot of garments because, you know, you gotta wear like 15 different articles of clothing when you're trying to dress Victorian. Hi! I do knit often. I I have just started streaming. I think yesterday was my first first time. But uh, 
I do knit often. I knit nearly every day these days. I am still technically a beginner though, but I feel like I've come a long way since I've started. I think I started probably about seven months ago with the knitting, but I have been sewing for about a year and a half. Uh, not yet. I have been planning on starting one though. I have a pattern that I want to follow that looks really cute. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a pattern of a cardigan that I've wanted to start, but it's a little intimidating to start working on one that's, that's that, a project that big. Uh, I have cardigans, I just haven't knitted any uh, yet, but I do plan on starting one soon. I was feeling a little intimidated by starting up with a cardigan because it's just, it seems like a lot of work, but I know it'll be worth it. And eventually I want to get to the point where I can knit an Edwardian bicycling sweater. And a cardigan would be much easier than that, but I haven't felt confident enough to start knitting one until relatively recently. But after working on these mittens, I think that I do, I do want to knit a cardigan and it is going to be uh, in the works pretty soon. I haven't felt confident in my ability to start one until relatively recently, but after working on some of my more recent projects like those mittens, I'm starting to think I could be a little, little closer to getting started on that. I am planning on making an Edwardian bicycling sweater at some point, and that will definitely be <laughs> an undertaking. So a cardigan would be a good place to start. I haven't really bought in any clothes for myself in the last maybe two years or so. I have been trying to knit and sew all of my uh, clothes since then, since I started. So it, it's definitely going to be a bit of an undertaking to do, but I have been working on sewing my own clothes for about two years now. I think I started up in like February or March of 2021 when I started sewing all of my clothes and I've I've definitely come a long way since then. It uh, started out pretty rough. That's for sure. As I say, a majority of my first things did not, didn't, they didn't hold up well at all. So I'm definitely a little uh, more skilled than I was back then. So it's coming, it's coming along. I started sewing before I started knitting. I think that's mostly because I know people who sew and I didn't know very many people who knitted, so I kind of had a little more uh, mentorship as far as sewing. Not that I had a whole lot, but I at least knew people who knew a little bit about it. So I didn't start off completely from scratch. I did have a little bit of knowledge, uh, being that my three grandmothers sew, 
But that was about it. I could ask them questions. Uh, but one of my grandmothers doesn't make clothes, so she was kind of uh, not really able to help much in that department. But my other grandmother, she could tell me all sorts of things about what to do. She also knits a bit, so I was able to get a little bit from her, but a majority of what I know has been self-taught. Yeah, it's, it's, def it's definitely in the family. Uh, I'm trying to keep it going because nobody else has uh, shown any interest in anything like this. So I'm happy to be the one to keep that tradition going. I, you, you could do it if you put your mind to it, I'm sure. You know, it takes, takes a lot of practice, but it is really nice for, you know, the days where you just want something to do with your hand to distract you from everything in life. I would much rather have a needle and thread in my hands than my cell phone just doom scrolling on social media. So I am a much happier person now that I've found some things that I can do with my mind and my hands. And I get some neat clothes out of it. Knitting really helps with that. It gives you, you know, you don't have to pay as much attention to it a majority of the time as you do uh, hand stitching. <laughs> uh, do you make anything at all? Or is it just, uh, relaxing to watch because I can definitely I can definitely see how it's relaxing to watch true it does take up quite quite a bit of time um, with the knitting I first just started you know doing it here and there when I had time but now that it's gotten a little bit quicker to do, I, I think it takes up a little less time, but it definitely is a time consuming hobby for sure. Oh, you play music. Do you, uh, which instrument do you play? Trombone. Nice. I haven't played an instrument since high school, but I did used to play French horn. And I played that through middle school and high school. So yeah, about the, the same time. I was in sixth grade in the U.S., which is when you're about uh, 12, 13 years old. Is when I started playing. I did like playing music. I just, once I was out and wasn't a part of a band or anything, you kind of just, I kind of just lost it. I was definitely a person who was great in a group, but not so much once I was on my own <laughs> at keeping up with it. Although I wish I did. I wish I was I wish I was able to still play as much as I used to. But also uh, the French horn doesn't always sound great on its own. It's I think it's a better suited for a band instrument. But I do miss it sometimes. That is for sure. This is turning out somewhat okay. 
<laughs> yeah, the brass instruments are uh, kind of like that sometimes where, yeah, they can somewhat sound okay on their own, but they really do shine much more once they're a part of a band, I think. but I do think trombones have a lot more solo potential than the French horn. The only time I uh, had to pursue any solos was whenever we played anything that needed something that sounded like a bagpipe. Ah, table tennis. I would be very terrible at that. I have the hand-eye coordination of a toddler when it comes to uh, that sort of thing. Unfortunately, as much as I'm sure a lot of people would love if I would be able to play that sort of thing with them, I've always been a on the on the sides kind of gal with that sort of stuff because I just I can't hit anything. <laughs> oh no, that it definitely is really fun to do. Okay. Almost got this collar all the way together. Just have a little tiny bit more to go. doesn't want to do it. There we go. So you're studying. What sort of studies are you in? Must be a very interesting. Ghent. Where is that? Uh, nothing too specific, just, you know, country. Belgium. That must be fun. I don't know a whole lot about Belgium. I live in the United States. Ah, uh, the pointless. I wish I wish we had more trains here. I wish public transportation was a lot better in the US. It's very unfortunately not very easy to use. <laughs> if available at all where you are, which a majority of places it is not. So basically if you need to get anywhere, you have to have your own, your own form of transportation. Oh, they're always too late. Yeah, that is problematic. I can imagine it's not very uh, reliable if it's always late. Can't ever depend on it to get anywhere. It's definitely, it's definitely probably easier to have uh, access to your own vehicle, but definitely has problems involved in it as well. You, know, you always have to have a lot on upkeep and so on. I sometimes wish that I didn't have to worry about that. Okay. 
because it can be very troublesome. I am not studying. I am out of school. Thank goodness. <laughs> I've been out for quite a bit, fortunately and unfortunately. Sometimes I wish that I was still back in school because it, it gave you something to do and it gave you a set schedule. I definitely miss having places to go, things to do. Yeah, I, I do get that a lot. I have a lot of people who would suspect that I am much, much younger than I am. I get the, you must be 16 a lot. <laughs> oh no, it is a compliment. I'm glad that I, I look much younger, younger, uh, for the obvious reasons. You know, I wouldn't want to be a mid 20 something and have someone be like, oh, you must be 45. Cause that would be pretty de depressing. <laughs> I've always, well, when I was much younger, I got the, you look much older than you are. But um, now that I'm in my twenties, my mid twenties, I usually get the, oh, you look, you look like you're a teenager still, which, you know, is nice. You can take that as a compliment. If it was the other way around, it would be not quite as fun. Nobody wants to look, look 40 when they're in their 20s. Although I've had, I've had a few friends in the past who definitely looked much, much older than they were for their age, which when you're a teenager kind of, kind of works out maybe a little bit because <laughs> you want everyone to think that you're much older than you are. So I lucked out in that regard, fortunately. I don't know, it can go, it can go both ways. It can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. Now, my poor thumbs. sewing can be one of those things that can be fun until it starts to hurt because I am the sort of person who is prone to stabbing themselves with their needles <laughs> which is a little unfortunate for my fingers Let's see if we have enough thread. I don't think it's going to get to the end. <laughs> I think I underestimated how far this needs to go. Just a slight tiny bit. <laughs> and I don't think it's going to get all the way to the end. think it's gonna happen when you have like an inch of thread left and you have probably like half an inch of something left to do 
it's just not it's not gonna make it all the way to the end but we got we got pretty close we got all the way over there it was close an attempt was made an attempt was made yeah I cannot make another stitch so I'm going to run and grab some thread back let's see if we can just get this to of course it's probably not gonna not, I'm not really gonna let me do it <sighs> And of course I've got like a frayed, super frayed end. Scissors. Why oh, I left them all the way over there? I do not know why. Okay. Now we just do the fun task of re-threading a needle. Can sometimes go super well and easy, and sometimes it's uh, problematic. Sheer focus. Yeah, I did one go. Slip a little, little knot in there. Then I will have to knot this to my little tiny uh, end over here. It's always super disappointing when you run out just before the time that you're gonna finish. <sighs> but it's a pretty easy fix. It took me quite some time to actually get pretty, uh, pretty good at threading needles. It used to take me several attempts, and I just wanted to trim the end, and I cut off the whole thing. <laughs> That's what I get. We're not double checking. There we go. Maybe a second attempt will go a little better. There we go. Yeah, one should probably not cut off their uh, actual thread piece when they're trying to trim the ends. Kind of set you back a little bit. Okay. Don't want you getting stuck on anything. It wants to tangle up. There we go.
Now I'm going to have an unfortunate little knot in my collar. But you shall persist. It'll be okay. With everything, stuff like this takes takes practice. I think the only reason why I got so I wouldn't say so skilled, because I'm still learning, but the only reason why I was able to get as far as I am doing this is because I I have literally practiced nearly every day. And as they say, practice makes perfect. It is not a lie. Oh yeah, even professionals are still learning a thing or two about what they do. You know? Even though, you know, we're still using the same equipment for some things that have been around for hundreds and thousands of years. You know, you're still learning about them. Still learning how to use them. Although, you know, you could say technology can change a lot, but for a majority of the crafts that I do, the technology is pretty much the same. It's maybe gotten slight advancements over the years, like electricity. <laughs> sure that helped a little bit, but my sewing machine from 1923 isn't so much different from my sewing machine from 2021. They, they definitely do the same, same sort of functions. One is easier to use. One has more functions, but they both get the job done in a way. That's kind of beautiful in a way too. Let me tie this off. See, I didn't need all that much thread anyways. I'm just gonna stick that right there. Our collar is put together. Sewed into place. I still have some pockets to attach. Because this pocket has a second pocket that goes with it. Cause that's something I can get behind, decorative pockets that don't have a whole lot of uh, use. <laughs> okay, you go have a good sleep. Have a lovely night. Aw, thank you for the follow. Hope to see you back sometime, but make sure you get rest.
Aw. Yeah, get 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 some rest so you can uh, get back to studying. Aw, thank you. You are pretty sweet too. It's been nice having someone to talk talk to. I I am new to this, so don't have a lot of people to chat with quite yet. Yes, go get some good sleep. Okay. I think I might move on to, yeah, see you later. I move on to some buttons. Gotta stitch, stitch these buttons on. So we are going to do, I think left-sided buttons. Don't know where I want to start. So I have eight, eight buttons that need to go on here. So, probably about two inches apart. And I don't know how far up the collar I want to start with these. So maybe here? I was wishing that I had uh, some orange and uh, yellow buttons to go with this. I don't, and I don't really feel like going out to get any. So I'm just going to do white buttons. Uh, I thought it would be cute to go along with the candy corn theme. To have like uh, yellow, white, orange, so on and so forth down uh, the buttons, the buttons changing colors, but I don't want to go find buttons that all look the same that are different colors. Because you can never, for some reason, get buttons <laughs> that are all the colors that you want in one package of buttons. And I don't know why. I wish I knew of a place where uh, you can just pick out one button at a time, whichever color you want that all look the same. But that would be asking a whole lot for a craft store. Way too much for a craft store. Which is unfortunate because I don't like buying a bunch of buttons that I won't need later. Can imagine you'd get quite the collection over time of just random buttons that you have like one or two left of that you're never going to have use for because not many things only require one button. What I do do sometimes when I have an extra button or two that doesn't match is I will use them for like hidden closures in pants or skirts because no one's gonna see them and you have extra buttons so pff, might as well use them somewhere might as well but I did not have any any orange ones Orange isn't a color I usually usually have a lot of. Unfortunately, it brings out the orange in my hair. <laughs> Which was okay when my hair was auburn. But now that I have a uh, lighter blondish colored hair, you don't really want the orange brought out quite as, quite as much. Okay, mm, about right there looks good. 
Let me stab myself with my needle a few more times. Didn't make a big enough knot. That should do it. I really should measure these out. I'm freehanding it. Not really something you should do with your buttons, but I can always fix them if they're too far off. Buttons are one of those things that usually betray me. Sometimes you get them on really well, and sometimes you think you get them on really well. And most of the time, they're just hanging on by a singular thread and are waiting to betray you at the worst moment. That is typically how it goes. Although I guess maybe the more I practice putting on buttons, the better off they will be. I need to wrap it around a couple times just to make sure it's a little more secure. And then uh, a couple more stitches through the holes. And then we are done with that. this off. Voila. Two buttons. Well, let me see. Let me pin that into somewhere. Show you what we've got going on. Got some yellow cuffs. And this is something new that I have not done before. It's a pleated and sleeve so I think that that is super cute but I think that's all the hand stitching I am going to do for today so probably leave this here but if you ever need to find me or want to watch anything else that I'm putting out I do have a YouTube channel it is under the name Kel Clace and you can always uh, catch some videos. I do upload weekly there and do some some shorts here and there, but it's mostly the weekly uploads that I do there. And that's every Wednesday, hopefully. <laughs> and I've been uploading there uh, for the past two years, so there's a lot of backlog that you can look at. So I am going to see you guys later. Bye-bye.